Hi guys, welcome to my channel Matt Van Gier. Today we've got a very very cool species of snake to show you. I'm one of our target species here on South African Expedition and it's Bitis Cornuta. It is a little tiny baby. We've been looking for the last maybe three, four days for this guy, road cruising, etc. And we tried to change up our tactics and we got a cool location and we ended up doing a bit of walking just before sunset and we got lucky. Now this is pretty much, I would say, a baby from this year, so it might only be a couple of months old, but it's still a perfect little replica of mom and dad. So here we have Bitis Cornuta, the many horned adder. What an incredibly cool little species of snake. Now these guys are called many horned adders because they have between four to seven little horns above each eye, or little tufts should we say, and it varies between individual to individual. This little guy's got, I'd call, two and a half tufts, but as they get a little bit older, it increases and they get bigger and bigger. It's a modified scale, not a horn, so it would just be scale protrusions that have grown and adapted for this particular snake. These snakes live in rocky outcrops and mountainous areas and Namakwa, Huru area, and there's a few isolated populations in the east of the Western Cape. These guys go all the way up into Namibia and north of the Northern Cape and a little bit across into where the Orange River meets the Atlantic. So these are Atlantic West Coast adders. In terms of their locality, they're living along the West Coast of South Africa and Namibia because they like that sandy, silty, rocky type habitat. So really, really well adapted little snakes uh, you can see the quintessential rough scales that these bitters have. They have keeled scales and they have these little chevrons going all the way down their body. They do have different color type localities depending where you find them. This one is a little bit more brown creamy due to the type of rock we have around here. As you get a little bit more coastal, they get a little bit lighter colored and up in Namibia where there's slightly more redder sand, the chevrons go from more of a browny to a reddish color but really, really, really stunning animals inhabiting gravel pits and rocky outcrops and fainbos where they can get away from the wind and end up basking during the early mornings and late evenings and then head out for some hunting at night. These guys will be rodent specialists once they're adults, but when they're small like this, they'll specialize on geckos and skinks and things like that. These guys are front hinged fang snakes just like all of your other bitters, like your puff adder. They're a cytotoxic snake, but with very little effect on humans. You'll get some necrosis and pain and swelling. It's not a pleasant bite, but it's not a medically significant bite. If you get an allergic reaction or a bad reaction, you might need hospitalization and follow your basic anti-venom procedure or envenomation procedure, which is keep calm, get in the car and get to the hospital. Now you can see this little guy's also, he's striking a little bit. They've got a beautiful little tongue with a pink edge on the end, which might be used for caudal luring, which has been noticed and seen in puff adders. But due to these guys not having much studies and research done on them living in these arid environments, not very much is known about them. Now these guys don't get much bigger than 30 to 40 centimeters in the wild with really large females maybe getting to 60 centimeters. In captivity they do get a bit bigger to around 75 centimeters but that's with regular feedings and not living in a harsh arid environment such as this. Females get a little bit larger than males as with most bitter species. The tails will be shorter on the females and longer on the males so this looks like a little boy just off the top of my head and he's actually huffing and puffing and hissing at me. He's, it's more of a squeak because he's so small, but it's like a little squeaky toy. It's really, really cute. 
In terms of reproduction, these guys are viviparous. They're giving birth to between five to 14 young and they'll measure between 13 to 16 centimeters, which is pretty large considering average size female is around 30 centimeters. So it's almost half her body length. The problem with these guys is because they are so cool and so cool looking, they're very often collected for the pet trade. Luckily, there is a good captive population, but there's also people in Europe who prefer to have wild caught snakes which is really, really strange to me if you have the ability to be able to get them captive bred. Really, really cool animal. Not going to disclose locations due to the reason of poaching, but this little guy is going to be found in the wild and left in the wild. We actually found this guy not even a couple hundred meters away from here. Took a GPS marker. We'll put it exactly back where it was because these dwarf adder species have been known if they moved too far away from their original location, it can have quite adverse effects on them. So there's a couple similar species to this snake that occur in a similar region. This is Bitis cornuta, the many horned adder, and you also have Bitis cordalis, which is the horned adder. They get slightly larger than these guys and have a little bit of a different color pattern and only have a single set of horns, sometimes a small second set behind that. But these guys you can differentiate from color as well as obviously the many horns, these guys having three to four little tiny horns. Hey guys, so if you like this video, please do subscribe, hit that notifications bell and stay tuned for the next species of reptile or snakes we find here on Expedition South Africa. And remember, stand for what you stand on. <laughs>